uh, comic fisty. No Harry Potter movie is good. And you're like, give me the Snyder Cut! Oh, sorry, just walk in front of you here. I'm gonna put a pop with him. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna put this here. <laughs> Universal needs to sue Sony. Hey, I'm an idiot. I was fired from Fox. Let me go. <laughs> I'd like actually to see Venom just crush Spider Man. E there we go. Hello, everyone. So, we're back today for another one of our very consistent episodes um, of our amazing podcast. And of course, as usual, um, I'm one of your co-hosts, Cullil, and you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Cullil underscore Deadpool and Letterbox. Let's just throw that in there for the sake of it. Um, and of course, I'm joined as usual by... What's going on, failures? My name, I'm a long... <laughs> I don't have Instagram because I deleted it. Um, you know Twitter. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on Instagram at Comic Boys. We'll all be there. We're on the same place. Yeah. You just kind of ghosted from social media, basically. Huh? Just kind of like, ah. Whatever. Yeah, so we're back, and we're doing stuff, and, you know, we're doing our usual thing because we like doing stuff. Theaters are opening up here, which, mm -hmm. th this week, so, like, that's amazing. Very exciting. We're going to be talking about Black Widow at the end ish you know we've got box office this time because there is a box office it's great finally after all that time marvel has released a movie a and movie. therefore and therefore yeah. there's box office for it i've got vague topics and i know there's a few things which you know we want to talk about but other than that it's very vague and we'll kind of just see what happens awesome so there may you might hear an intro like right now but we're going to do some trivia okay the right answer! You lose when I tell you to lose. Here it is. We're going to take a test. So All I'm right. going to be I'm putting you on the hot seat. you got to be ready for this. Oh, boy. Okay? So the first question, okay? I think there's like, what is it? There's five questions. Okay. Okay? The first question is, which movie of the following that I'm going to name never got nominated for an Oscar? A, Reservoir Dogs. B, 12 Angry Men. C, Taxi Driver. D, Pulp Fiction. Which movie never got nominated for an Oscar? Reservoir Dogs. That is correct. There we go. See, so far, doing good. Okay, question two. Which movie did George Clooney call, quote, a waste of money? Which movie was a movie? Which... Was, was he in the movie? He was in the movie. Batman. Full name? Batman Returns. No, close. You were right, Batman. Batman and Robin was the actual movie. Uh -huh. <laughs> Um, we'll, well, I'll give that to you, you know? All right. You're, you're okay. close. You knew which one it was. Oh, kind you. of. Okay, question three. What was the highest grossing comedy of all time until Home Alone? The highest grossing comedy of all time until Home Alone? Was it? It's, 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 it's actually, when you hear the answer, you'll be like, that makes sense. It's an, it, it is an old movie. Like. Is it, um, fuck, oh, what's the name of that? I rem there is a name of a movie in my head, but I just can't get it out. Um, Home Alone. So it was before Home Alone, because obviously Home Alone came in and destroyed uh, everything. Bre Breakfast Club. Is that considered a comedy? I, that, that's my guess, Breakfast Club. That is incorrect. The answer is actually Ghostbusters. Oh my god. <laughs> Whoa, oh my god, why? I was like... I was like, I'm pretty sure if it's something that's like not coming to you, it can't. You're not thinking of Ghostbusters because go. I was gonna say, I was gonna give you a hint, but I was worried that if I gave you any hint, it would give it given it away for sure. Uh, I, I won't take any hints. I'll uh, I'll use my the best of my limited abilities. Hey, I mean, you're right now. You technically got two of the first two right, so you know. Okay, question four. Okay, you can redeem yourself here. Right. Tom Cruise just returned his. Golden Globes in protest. Uh, when I wrote these, yeah, at least he had just returned them in protest. Uh, which movies and parts did he win them for? The three that he returned. Born on the Fourth of July. That has to be one of them. Yes. Um, cocktail and Valkyrie. No. What, what's the answer then? Okay, so Born on the Fourth of July, actor um, in a drama motion picture. Jerry Maguire, actor in a musical or comedy. And Magnolia, act, supporting actor in a motion picture. And it's Tom Cruise. 
I was like, Tom Cruise, that's like, that must be in the bag. Born on the 4th of July, obviously, because that's his best movie right there. And that's his best performance. But I wouldn't have guessed the other one. Yeah. Have you seen Jerry Maguire? Yeah. Yeah, I have. Okay, the last question. Okay. All right. What was Christopher Nolan's directorial debut called? I believe this was a feature. I'm pretty sure this was his first feature film. Or this was his first feature film. His feature film directorial debut, I think. Wait, I've got to double check that because I want to be wrong. It's his first film. Either it's his first feature film or – hold on. Let me check. For, yes, it was his first feature-length film. It's an hour and ten minutes long. It came out in 1998. Okay, so he's made Interstellar. He's made Dunkirk. He made the Batman movies. Mm-hmm. Um, all of those in the 2000s. So it's before that, before all of those. He made Tenet. He made yeah. Inception. I'm trying to list off the movies. Um, his first – I mean, at least in – you know, besides this movie, the movie I remember hit at least being it the next. Hmm? It came out in 98. Uh, yeah, 98. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, wait. I think I got it, actually. Um, okay, Tenet, Inception, Interstellar, The Dark Knight Trilogy, Dunkirk. Uh, following. Yes, there you got it. I knew it. I See, I didn't know if you'd get that was the one I was like. There's a chance, but I that would, I felt like that was one of the harder questions because it's like, it, it's one of those movies where it's like I wasn't fully sure. Like I had to I de- I had to look this up. I thought of the question and I was like, wait, I gotta ch- double check this because I'm not fully sure because I've actually I've, never seen Following. I just um, I've known of it, so I haven't. I wasn't fully sure. I was like, I gotta check, but that feels like it was the old earliest, like just in terms of, you know, things. Yeah, but. If it's 1998, then, yeah, it seems like it would be his first, because he started the Batman trilogy pretty early in the 2000s as well. Yeah, and a lot of his movies that you know of, right, are are they're, 2000s movies, right? They're pretty recent, too, like Tenet, Dunkirk, and such. Because, like, The Prestige, I think, was probably his... Was that his earliest 2000s movie? It might have been. I think so. Right? That, and that was, I think, like, six, right? Yeah, six. Yeah. And so it was kind of like... that. That's Because it's like... I'm just trying to see if he had anything earlier than... No, Prestige was his second film. Yeah. Tar... Oh, no, that was a producer film. What was his first director? What film did he direct first? Let's see. Like, oh, he... So it was a short film called Tarantella. It was his first one. It was four minutes long, 1989. Four minutes long, wow. It was a TV short. And then Larceny was his second short film before he obviously directed... Oh, and then he directed Doodlebug. Doodlebug. Was that a three short minutes. film? Yeah, three minutes. Okay. And then his first feature film was following in 1998. So technically, he's been directing since 1989 in terms of, like, making movies. Wait, wait, wait. I I actually think I wrote down trivia questions for, for you as well somewhere. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I swear to God. I, I, on God, I think I wrote trivia questions for you. Because then we can get everyone in the hot seat. Let me just find real quick. Here they are. Perfect. Oh, okay. I got it. Let's go. Wonderful. First question. Which movie did Matthew McConaughey star in where he was playing a former Confederate soldier who abandoned the Confederate Army in order to start his own group of freed slaves and just a bunch of other Confederate soldiers to take down the Confederacy in southeast Mississippi? Oh, shoot. I feel like I'm about to be exposed here. Um, Matthew McConaughey. The fact that I'm drawing a blank right now in terms of what this movie is, I feel like I know what this movie is. Oh, hold on. Um, wow, I'm just gonna get exposed here. Oh, damn. Um, I think I legitimately cannot think of a single. I literally cannot think of a single movie Matthew McConaughey was in right now. I literally nothing. I'm drawing a complete blank here. I literally I can. I can see his face. I can't see any movie he's been in, like in my head right now. Oh, I don't know why. I'm dr- okay, I, I, I. Do you do you want me to give you some hints? I'll give yeah. you. I'll give you your options. Okay. Okay. Is it one, uh, Dallas Buyers Club, two, Serenity, three, Free State of Jones, or four, Gold? It's not Serenity. It's not. No, I, I just need to talk myself. Through. It's not Serenity. I'm almost a hundred percent sure of that. It's not Dallas Fires, but I'm almost 100% sure of that. But that might be... It's wait, What was the third option, sorry? Free State of Jones and Gold. Um, oh, do I go with Free State of Jones? Because that's the one... Or 
called Freestyle Challenge. I got some news for you. You are correct. Oh, yeah. See, once I heard it, I was like, Freestyle Joe's, that, that's right. You got that it must right. Be right. I was like, gold, gold is tempting, though, because it, it, like, it was, my brain was like, that feels, you know. Okay, let's, all right, second. Along with Inglorious Bastards, which World War II movie was Brad Pitt the lead role in? <laughs> Jeez. Um, World War II movie. See, I don't, my war movie knowledge is, like, non-existent. Um, <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I, my war movie knowledge is, like, not there. Um. I know this movie though. I definitely know this movie. I think you watched it. You might have. I feel like I have. I feel like I know exactly. I see this movie. It wasn't a. It was a serious movie, right? It was a very serious movie. Yeah. Yeah. Because like in Glorious Bastards, it's like a comedy movie-ish, you know. Tarantino movie, obviously, is gonna be yeah. something comedic about a dark period of time. Yeah. Why? Can you give me a, a like how recent was it? Um. About the movie came out about seven years ago. Seven years ago. Why is this? Why is this not working? Man? <laughs> this is great. I'm telling you, it's just the movie. The movie did have a pretty good cast. Yeah, I I feel like I know exactly which movie this is, but it's just not like, like I see it. I see it in my head. I just don't know what the oh uh, Brad Pitt. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I legitimately don't know. Do you want? Do you want some hints? Yeah. All right. Is it seven? Fury, no. The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, or Legends of the Fall? Okay, so it's not Curious Case of Benjamin Button. It's not Seven. It's uh, this the second one. What did I say was the second one? Uh, Fury. Are you picking Fury? I'm picking Fury. Our survey says... <laughs> you are correct. There you go. See, when I get those options, then I'm like, okay, yes, because... I don't know if you're ask like asking me out of like just like out of the blue actors what they've done. I'll most times draw a blank, and then I'll hear the option of like I've seen half these movies. I know exactly what the one. I knew exactly as soon as you said I was like Fury. It is, and then I want to hear the rest of the option to make sure I wasn't missing something. You got him. You're two for two. You got two more to go. Okay. Next All one. Right. Which movie had a skyrocketing sales at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic? Skyrocketing. Contagion. And watches. Contagion. You got it. Yeah, that that one I know because I watched it at the beginning of the pandemic. So. All right, next one. It's a little more up your alley. You're watching. This is about Marvel. Okay, this one I got. I have to have this one in the bag. I'll tell you. So, other than Robert Downey Jr., who was supposed to be Iron Man? Tom Cruise. Yeah, it's too. I knew that was too easy, but yeah, you got it right. I knew that that one, that one was too easy. That but one I, was like. Decided to keep it on. It's it's whatever. Yeah, it was good. I think we should do this again. That was fun. I had fun. That was really fun. I, that was that was good. Yeah. Um. So now speaking of fun, you know which streaming service wants to try to have let people have more fun on that? Uh, Disney Plus. Nope. Uh, Netflix. Yes. See, the segues are still on point, by the way. Just like it doesn't matter. Um, what Netflix wanted to do? Netflix. It actually was very recently. This kind of just. It, that's why I'm kind of like going to ask you your opinion on this. Netflix has decided, or a net, or it's been reported, that they will be working on ad- adding gaming to their streaming service by 2022. Gaming. Now, when they say they've hired someone from EA and f- they hired a former EA Facebook executive, Mike Verdu, um, as the vice president of game development for Netflix. Now. There's two things in my mind, at least. I want to know what you think of this, um, you know, in terms of, I guess, what they could do here. In my, the first thing that comes, kind of comes to my mind in terms of streaming services and gaming that makes sense is like an – I don't know if you know, but they did the uh, interactive, like, Black Mirror thing. I don't know if you heard of that. Yeah. Or, like, I think they did another one as well besides Black Mirror, but I remember for sure they did the Black Mirror one. And it's kind of like – that was like a game, I guess, right? But it was like an interactive kind of thing kind of choose your own adventure type mm-hmm. i guess quote unquote game so in my mind at least when you say gaming that makes sense right what would you mean like arcade games or something like what the we app- don't know yet we don't we, all we know is game huh. like what okay what would you want some sort of arcade game like the one the app store does but something related to movies that netflix has provided to their viewers like for example they can do some sort of like arcade game of 
Iron Man flying through obstacles, and then through each obstacle you pass, you get a point for that because Netflix has Iron Man movies uh, present. They technically in don't have the rights to Iron Man, but yeah. That is true. That is true. But like for their originals, you could do similar things. Yeah. Yeah. But what what I meant to say is like they have Iron Man in their movies, in the Marvel movies that they show, but they don't have the rights to it. But they can do something along those lines, like yeah. an arcade like that. See, in my mind, I don't know how that like. Because this is the thing. If this was, uh, um, like, like it's, like, because instantly when they say games, my mind first went to Apple Arcade, right? And how what Apple's doing with with that and how they're, but what they, but the difference is Apple does apps, right? Like, that's kind of their thing. So them doing Arc, Apple Arcade and doing kind of these premium, I guess, apps, it makes sense because that's their lane, right? And it, they, you know, you can, between, like, you know, the Apple thing, you can promote the Apple TV box by saying, well, then you can play on your TV, right, with these games, these very extensive kind of mobile games, which feel like console games, in a sense, right? No ads, none of that, because you're paying for arcade. And in my mind, at least, that makes sense. Like, but then it doesn't make sense for Netflix, right? Like, it makes sense for Apple, but not for Netflix, if you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. And that's kind of where I'm at. It's like, I mean, I like, look, if they do something where they do kind of more of these interactive things... I've, I think that would actually be amazing if they kind of popularize that because, you know, when you have to separate – if you're if, – but that would still be, I guess, more media-based than gaming-based, right? Yeah. Now, if a guy comes from EA, I mean, you, we could we could talk about how – whether or not there are going to be paywalls in front of every choice. You have, like, if it uh, isn't – EA is a problematic group of people that make some strange games. I, I feel like if you're coming from EA and Facebook, there's a lot of question marks about your abilities. So – you know, like that, those cred- credentials right now are not the best credentials to have, EA and Facebook. But, I mean, Netflix is very committed to. Now, the question, the other question is, do they put a paywall around this or or do they raise prices again? Is this like, is this their excuse to raise prices again, essentially? Oh, I think this is actually a good excuse. But the thing about it is, they don't want to say it's a excuse for Netflix to pay, for users to pay more money. It's just like. No, they won't say that, but. We know, we know, it, we'll know. The games they're making is like paint is like the way of them painting. Be like, hey, look, we don't care about you, and we just want your money, so we're just making this arcade. That's what they're trying to do. And like, would people use it? Like, if it's not high quality, would you like? Would you say, yeah, I want to go on Netflix to play games when you're probably if you're watching netflix on a phone or like a on a phone or a laptop or whatever where you can literally buy get games you know either from the app store or whatever yeah. or from steam or whatever the case may be and literally play good games like would you be like and how what? would that work on the tv like how what? would that work on a normal tv that's that's true that's also that's something that has to be taken into consideration but why buy games on Netflix when folks like you and me, we have a, a console where we can play some high-quality games that are probably going to be a lot better than the arcade games Netflix is going to have. Or even just d- downloading from the App Store, right? Like, or, yeah, on your phone, on your computer or something, whatever it is. Or, you know, Steam on, like, you know, a PC. Like, you've got all these options. I don't know if it's... Like, now, if they do something in terms of the interactive side of things, in terms of, like, interactive TV, I guess, like that... Blocking. Yeah, like Black Mirror. That, I think, would work really well. And I think that would actually popularize that and it would allow Netflix to kind of be the first ones. And I could def- – like, I definitely see a world where Disney does something like that in the future if Netflix uh, is succeeding with it. Because Disney has no problems copying Netflix and just doing it a hundred times better. I th- yeah, I think there was actually a lot of positive um, reception from the people who did the interactive Black Mirror. There's actually a lot of good reviews for that, and people actually thought it was a uh, rather interesting idea to add on. And I think it does differentiate – because I, re- I saw this other thing, which is like that by um, – what is it? I'm just going to try to see if I can find it again. I saved it somewhere here. Yeah, so here. So in the next week or so, Netflix's U.S. library will be 40 percent made up of Netflix originals. Two out of every five titles will be a Netflix original. And that's kind of – like here it will be different because the rights are different. But that's crazy. That is. That really is. Like that like for a company like Netflix, which like ten years ago was still doing D V D stuff. To the fact yeah. they're or maybe it's a bit more than ten years ago, but 
they were doing DVD, they were the DVD, Netflix, the DVD thing, right? And now they're over here, literally going to about to have almost all original content. Like that's kind of crazy. It, they've been making a bunch actually. Of, um, the question is, is it quality content? That's the question. The, Netflix has had a, a, like they're very inconsistent with making good content on their like originals. And they're very inconsistent. That's actually a, that brings me to another little sub point, I guess, to this kind of Netflix talk, which was a survey that was done. And I actually made a video on this when it ha- when I to talk about it, but I want to talk about it again here because I want to hear your opinion on this. And so there was a study done by um, Ampere Analysis, okay? okay, and it was about the lasting buzz of films, okay. And they basically did this on the popularity of scripted English language movies from January 2016 to March 2020. And it was the is and it was the percentage of films that maintained a significant public interest for more than five months. And so I want you to first guess who is the who do you think had the highest percentage of Disney, Warner Bros, Paramount, Fox, Sony, Universal, and Netflix? Who do you think had the highest buzz? Highest buzz for what? For their movies from March 26 January 2016 to March 2020. English movies. Or Marvel movies. So Disney. Disney. You're correct. Disney had okay. over around like 45%, uh, 45 to 50% buzz percentage of lasting buzz over five months, which is by far the most. Yeah. And I mean, Disney, that's what Disney does. And it, we know it because it translates to box office. Exactly. Yeah, they make bank in the box office. They make ridiculous amounts of money. And who do you think was second? Second, was it um, Warner Bros.? Yep, yeah, Warner they're... Bros. Just under 20, like 18% buzz. Yeah, because of all their DC movies that they make. And a few of the other things they have. Make several other, like... Little uh, things that will have buzz. They, they make but, several other big-name movies, but most of their profits come from DC. Yeah. Well, actually, I think they'll lose most of their money on DC right now, but um, <laughs> DC's kind of a mess at the moment. Yeah. I mean, when was not a mess? Let's be honest now. Yeah. <laughs> but like look at the drop off though between Disney and Warner Bros. Like it's like fifty percent to twenty percent essentially. Like yeah. that that's a big Disney, drop off. And Disney is clearly win- the winner of the competition between the two. And so guess who was third? Uh Sony? Nope. Paramount was third. Paramount, okay. I mean they've got a lot of stuff too, yeah. right? Like kids movies and stuff too. Yeah. And then and they had about um like ten percent buzz. Okay. Fox, which doesn't exist anymore, was after that with, like, again, around that same amount of buzz, a little bit less. Maybe you can say closer to five, you know, because they kind of just went t- 0, 20, 40, 60 for, like, yeah. their scale. Right. And then Sony would be after Fox and then Universal. But then Netflix was at the bottom with zero. There's no bar for Netflix. Nothing. Zero percent. Yeah. And But, like, if you look at it in terms of just – Again, from not from TV shows, but just movies, and specifically English language movies. When have you heard about an English language Netflix movie being talked about five months after it comes out? Never. Never has that once happened. Like there might be one example I could think of, and I can't. I like I can't think of an example. And maybe there's one, but like that's kind of crazy. The fact that Netflix, like for all the like, if you go, actually, I'm gonna go on Netflix right now. Okay, it's gonna experiment. Okay. I'm going to go to – they've got their original section, I think, right? They do, right? Do, do they Do they not? I believe they do. I thought they did. Maybe I'm just blind. They, they legitimately don't have an original – Netflix originals, nothing? I, they used to for sure. Okay, well, let's just scroll through the normal Netflix then, and let's see. We're going to see how many – we're going to see how many originals I've never heard of before, which are there, okay? All right. I'm going to scroll to a random place in Netflix. Young Ry- Royals. Young Royals. The TV show. So it's not really a movie, but I've never heard of this before. This is the first time I'm ever hearing of this show. Have you heard of it before? No, never. Fear Street Part 1. I think I've seen some advertisement for this. Maybe. Three. I, I mean, like, I'm just literally looking through them. Like, I've legitimately, like, River. I've heard of Riverdale. Okay. I've not seen it, but I've heard of it. Um... Like, a lot of these, I'm looking, just looking at them, like, I've legitimately never heard of half these movies. Or I'll remember, or, like, some of them I'll remember hearing about, right? But then, you know, they just kind of go, like, 
Bird Box. That was that was the one that, which I think I come to the most is because that one had a big kind of I guess cult following at the beginning. Tiger King. That's I think that's a show though, right? Was it a Netflix original? It was, but it was a show I think. Hmm. Right? It, I'm pretty sure it was a TV show. Yeah. It was a, and it was a documentary series too, or like a, right? I think so. I'm pretty sure. It was, I'm pretty sure it was a documentary. That one had long, but then again, because that's why they're only talking about movies. Because TV shows get weird because. You know, Stranger Things you definitely had buzz long after it came out, right? And they had their TV shows that have more popularity. But, like, the movies, like, there's one watchable movie out of every five they release. And if there is a point where Netflix becomes all originals, will there be people who actually say, if they're choosing between Netflix and something else, I want Netflix? Yeah. Like, if Netflix is going to pu- push out content like this, they need quality, like Disney, right? Disney is a very good example of this. Disney now doesn't have the same pressures as Netflix because obviously they have their back catalog. But Disney pushes out quality. Like, they only push out a handful of things, but everything they push out is good, right? The difference is between Disney and Netflix is the consistency. Disney is very consistent when it comes to releasing good quality, whereas Netflix is extremely inconsistent with releasing good quality. Like, the release four horrible movies then one pretty good one four horrible one good one five terrible one good one um yeah and that's the thing and it's like it's it's weird because it's like um why i guess like i know why they're trying to do this but it's like why like i mean i don't know because like i understand why they're trying to do it but it's like why can't they make good content i guess that's that's like the four that's part of their that's one of Netflix's biggest weaknesses that they're trying to figure out. But they, from what they've been releasing, it doesn't seem like they're doing a hard enough job of trying to figure out how to fix one of their biggest problems. And, like, this is the other thing. It's, like, some of this stuff could legitimately be good. Like, some of the stuff they're releasing could legitimately – like, I, I, I can't sit here and say it's all trash. Like, they release five trash movies for every one good one because I don't really watch those five – quote unquote trash ones so I don't know if they're actually bad they could be good but I think the other problem comes out to Netflix's inability to market things yeah right yeah because what Netflix does and I don't know if you've noticed this but when you see a Netflix an advertisement for Netflix movie like I remember the one the the Zack Snyder one I think it was Zack Snyder right the army of the dead one remember that I think so because that was like a big thing for a while and then it kind of died out like right away again another example of something that was big and then kind of died out but i remember that was something which happened right and it was um yeah army of the dead it was zack snyder's army of the dead movie and that was one where it's like i felt like it was so heavily marketed but it was something that people were already excited about beforehand right Mm -hmm. so i think it's kind of like they they see something everyone's excited about and they're like let's go market that more you know yeah and I don't know if it, it's like it might be a chicken and egg scenario where it's like I don't know if people really got started excited about it because of how much it was marketed or if they were already excited. Because I know there were people who were excited before they started marketing it heavily. So I don't know how that went. But it feels to me at least like they don't market the right – they don't – their marketing team is garbage. Like Disney, there's, if there's one thing you can tell – you could say Disney is amazing at, it's their marketing, their PR, all of that stuff. Yeah, that's what they're very good at. And that's what the same case was with like Avengers Endgame. They were doing such a good job of marketing the movie. And I mean, that movie marketed itself, but like they were able to make people be interested in like Ant Man and Doctor Strange. Yeah, like, yeah, even like casual Marvel fans who aren't there. There, there are these people like these Marvel fans that aren't as invested in the smaller movies like Ant Man and Doctor Strange as much as they're in Endgame, and they were able to still attract them to watch these movies. Even casual audiences. People who aren't, you know, very much um, watching Marvel movies, they were still able to attract them. It doesn't matter who it is because it's for it's suitable for all audiences, you know. It doesn't matter. The audience is, is very diverse in terms do you, of. Do you think that's the other thing, which is, I guess, Disney again primarily is, and all these other studios above Netflix are primarily um, in theaters mm-hmm. with their movies. Yeah. They aren't releasing onto a streaming service where – because the other thing I think could be an, an, a reason is – because obviously – this is this is from 2016, so obviously when theaters were fully operational, people were still watching movies, right? Marvel had a whole bunch of stuff, you know. But when you go to – like going to a theater to watch a movie, 
you know, sometimes you don't watch it right away, right? Sometimes you watch it because movies are in theaters for so long that if you're if it's talk, you're talking about maintaining over five months, when you're going to a theater, you do end up naturally talking about that movie more for longer periods of time because it's in theaters. On Netflix, everyone can watch a movie as soon as it comes out at like whatever two o'clock when they release their stuff or one thirty, and boom. You know, then the next day people stop talking about it because why would you talk about something after everyone's seen it, right? Exactly. Because that could be the other thing because it's instant rather than, okay, I've got to go to a theater, you know, it, you know, maybe a movie comes out on Friday and then I don't go until like, you know, and I don't want to be there on the, when it's really busy, um, but then I can't go during the week. So I go the weekend after. So you're talking about it then the second weekend, right? And yeah. if it's a really good movie, you'll rewatch it and you'll go maybe, but then you can't, again, you're not going to go the next day. You're going to have to go. The next weekend, right? And then you that's just kind of, you know, it you know, lengthens the time, I guess. Yeah. So that could be another problem is Netflix's lack of, I guess, theater, right? Which because otherwise, if I want to watch a movie twice, I watch it whenever I want, right? Yeah. Like a theater, you can't just say I'm gonna go to a theater today on a random like, you know, time on Monday, right? Like you have to, it's like a thing you have to plan, I guess, you know. So the other thing, I guess, when it comes to this stuff is the future of theaters, which we've talked about a little bit. Like, I, we talked about a little bit prior and just at different points in time. What do you, do you think the theaters have actually been, I guess, in a sense, in the long term, benefited from the pandemic and the shutdown and having people kind of realize what they're missing with the movie theaters? I think actually the movie theater industry is actually kind of degraded during the pandemic. And for obvious but, reasons, not, no, not, not a lot of people are going to to a movie theater, you know, you got an increasing amount of people who are building their own theaters at home with um, big screens and elite level um, speakers and such. And then they, and then during this pandemic, movies that were originally supposed to release in theaters have been moved to TV. So people would prefer to watch it at home with their families comfortably on their couch instead of going to to a movie theater to see it. But now, I don't know if it's just me, and because I, I feel like I've seen a lot of this is a lot of people are really hungry to go back to theaters now because I think they've kind of realized after doing this for so long in the pandemic, two years, whatever, people kind of realizing, wait a second, this movie theater experience is actually a very special experience, right? Like, it's a really unique experience, and it's so, it's a very fun, like, I think people are kind of getting bored of the theaters because I know for sure, I, I think we actually talked about this on on this podcast at some point prior which is we're kind of, you know, we we're kind of excited for this new age of kind of movies at home. It's very, con it's so convenient to watch movies at home, right? I'd much rather sit here and watch a movie because rather than go to a theater, right? Mm -hmm. sure. But I think that's, at least for me, that narrative changed in my head where it's like, I really want to go to a theater now because there is a lot in that theater experience, which you don't get at home, right? Like when I was watching Black Widow and I, maybe you can relate to this as well. Um, obviously not having watched it in a theater because theaters were not open to, yeah. to be watched in. Like, did it feel almost wrong, I guess, in a sense of watching a, a big Marvel movie like that, not in a theater and watching it at home? Not like, I'm so honestly, I'm so used to hearing the crowd cheer. Like when the Marvel logo comes on for a movie, I was, I was like, I was like, um, this is, this is weird. Oh, wait, someone cue the clapping sound effects. Yeah. What's going on? Well, yeah, for sure. It's because of this, um, it's because of this, I guess, you can call it a a tradition of seeing Marvel movies in theaters that it was kind of weird to watch it at home with the family and not in a group of people where, you know, for example, in Endgame, every, basically every theater that was watching it on its opening night, they were going crazy, clapping, cheering, and reacting and such. And then that, that happens a lot with Marvel movies, actually. But... Yeah, it's it's because of the tradition we're so used to of going to a theater and having to watch it with other people and just being so loud and so excited. And then th th there was something missing watching. Me. Don't get me wrong, watching Black Widow at home with the family, it was it was great. It was really great, but there's something inconvenient. There's there's something inexplainable that was missing about watching, it, especially a, a blockbuster Marvel Cinematic Universe film. And and that's the thing. Like, are there movies that make sense to watch at home? A hundred percent. A hundred percent, yeah. But is that necessarily like a blockbuster? Like, those I think still need a place in theaters. Now, at the same time, I think on the on the kind of like the the, the kind of similar token, 
do I think the theatrical release window is way too long to be like in terms of exclusive theatrical release? I do think that's a window that's way too long. I think the time it takes for a movie to leave theaters and end up, you know, on streaming services and stuff is too, too long. And we know that's kind of shifting because a lot of of studios have gotten those shorter deals. Um, Universal tried a day and day thing. I think that's dumb as well because I think you want to encourage theatrical kind of release. I think Disney's going to actually hit the sweet spot when things come back, as we'll talk about when we talk about box office. But I think, you know, the HBO Max model is stupid. I think the I think the Universal model is I think the Universal model where they're negotiating the theatrical release for a shorter window, and I think Disney's going to use as well is a smart one, right? Because the majority of the money is made in that first, I think it was like five week window, the majority of the money, then it's just kind of like, you know, cause that's when you get all your first watches in the first five weeks, typically. Yeah, exactly. And then it drops off substantially, right? Cause yeah. you know, when we talked about the box office, we talked about that week to week drop off, right? And right. by the time you get to week five, you see that drop off, that's when you're like in the, you're out of that top 10 of movies and you're just kind of, making yeah you're making money and it'll help your overall gross but if people want to watch the first watches and even some of the second watches have been done at that point and at that point if you're going to send it home to like streaming services that's when it i think is smartest yeah and now what do you think of this idea of of disney specifically disney because disney's done this is you know when things are fully back to normal they do exclusive theatrical release for um you know five weeks right yeah, so let's say a movie streaming channel well and then premium access right for let's say two months yeah. okay and then fully released open to anyone i say maybe six weeks of theatrical release because it can take a take a while for everyone to go see like everyone who's intrigued let's say marvel just came out with a new movie let's say um they, they came out with a brand new spider-man movie let's say I think it would take a little while, considering it's Spider-Man, for everyone to go have the full movie theater experience. Mm-hmm. It. Really, anyone who is interested in going to watch any theaters. But then the thing about it is, when it comes to theater, the, to theater, to um, to streaming services, just instantly make it accessible for anybody. That's what I would say. Well, what I mean by theatrical, I mean exclusive theatrical, right? So like, you know, it'll probably still be in theaters. Like the movie will still be in theaters after that five weeks. But that's the five weeks where it's only in theaters. All you can do is watch it in theaters. Yeah. And then you, then you, but then they do premium access where you have to pay like whatever the, the premium, like you know, thirty bucks or whatever to watch it if you want to watch it then. And then they kind of wait. They give it like whatever the few months, and then they release it fully for everyone on Disney Plus. I the reason I think that's smart, is because you're not losing business. I guess in a, in a sense you're not losing business, right? Yeah. Um. You know, you're not losing any business because if you want to watch it in theaters, you're watching it in the theaters, right? Yeah. All you're doing is you're, I guess, gaining business, right? Because your people who may not go to a theater to watch it, they will watch it. Or if someone says, hey, you know, I want, I'll, I'll just, I'll buy it on Disney Plus, whatever, I want to watch it again. You know, they'll go do that. You, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, that's understandable. But the thing about it is, the pre, I, I saw like the Black Widow movie came out on like exclusive, whatever it's called. Disney premium already has access, enough, yeah. yeah, the premium access, and Disney already has enough money from people subscribing to their streaming service and having to pay this monthly, is it monthly? Is it a monthly um, fee? Disney Plus is monthly or yearly, yeah. Monthly or yearly, but, but I don't see the um, the necessity for premium when they're already making bank from movie theaters with their big name movies and the the great amount of people who are subscribed to their streaming services well the only problem is when it comes to things like like this is the thing when it comes to certain things like things that were made for disney plus that makes sense because of the way they budget it right but when it comes to movies that were meant to be in theaters and were made for theaters you lose the if you're just relying on subscriptions that's not new revenue right? right that's revenue which is already accounted for it's not new the new revenue comes in later, like the new revenue that would come in, like when you go watch it at a theater is, is lost essentially. Right. Because you're then saying, cause no one's going to go at the end of the day, if it's between free at home 
and a theater, there will still be a substantial amount of people who don't who watch it on Disney Plus at home without going to the theater, right? Because and what you're doing is you're essentially set as incentivizing them to at least the first time watch it at in theaters, right? Because either you're gonna pay at theaters or you're gonna pay at home, right? Right. And then you're also incentivizing them, you know, to kind of maybe if you can get some people to wa- you know watch in theaters and then buy it and watch it at home, or if there's people who really want to watch it but don't want to go to a theater. You know, and again, we're assuming after COVID, after all that. Oh, oops, I can't say that word. Oopsies. Oh well. Uh, after the the thing is done, but you know, you know what I mean. I so, actually, just kind of going back to what we were talking about before in terms of the thing. So I just pulled this up quickly while you were talking. Was the actual date, the weekly release for Spider-Man: Far From Home, because you use Spider-Man as an example for six weeks, right? And actually, I think you're probably right on the money with six weeks. So the so if you look at so going through through the first five weeks of Spider-Man. It, by the fifth week, it's making 20 million in theaters, okay? Right. Domestically. We're not talking international because I'm not going to find that right now. But then week six is a drop off to only – is to 13, okay? Yeah. But then after that, going into week uh, seven, which is after six, right? Yeah. Then it's eight million. Yeah. That's the big drop off because then it goes eight, four, two, six, one, and then it's out of the millions. Yeah. So that drop off from 13 to 8, I think you're exact. I think you're right on the money exactly with that Spider-Man movie. Um, is specifically Spider-Man in terms of that fall off from about you know 13 or about 13 to 8, right? With well, that's the big fall off right there, right? Yeah. When you go from double digits to single digits, you're not going back up to double digits unless it's some weird anomaly. Which so is I think not gonna happen. I, I think you're right. You're 100 percent right about that. Um, that week to week thing for week six instead of because I was saying five, but six makes more sense because of the because that's when the drop off really happens. And I think that might be what it actually is. I might have been just making up five in my head because I thought it was five. One off, hey, you're close. Yeah, <laughs> but it's funny because you got it, and it was Spider Man too. It's not like it was a. No, I just thought of Spider Man right off right off my head. I wasn't like pre thinking of that. It was just it's a, it's a big name, so I'm yeah. just gonna think. Also, we know we you know we know how much you love Spider Man. Oh my God, not this Spider Man particularly. We know how much Spider Man is <laughs> your favorite. Tom Holland is your favorite actor in the entire world. We we know this. Don't worry. You don't have to hide it. <laughs> we know the truth. Oh my God. We we know the we know the truth. We know yeah. how much you love Spider Man. Truth be told, is Tobey Maguire will forever be the best Spider Man. <laughs> okay, so kind of uh, as like I guess a follow up question. Would you watch? Would you watch Black Widow get in theaters theoretically? Yes. Are you going to? I guess that'd be the better question. Yes, actually. Okay. Yeah. I th- I think I might. I want to watch Space Jam in theaters now, so I'm not like I I think I'm not. I was gonna initially just get it at home. Space Jam's coming this week. Yeah, that's gonna be a good movie for sure. It is. It is. It is gonna be a good movie. Uh, yeah, but theaters opening. That's good. Let's talk about Black Widow now. I think let's just go right into it. Um. So I'm going to give a spoiler warning here. There might be some clip montage, like, either before or after I say this. I don't know what I'm going to do. You, I, I, can't, I'm like, I'm, uh, I can't tell the future. I was going to make a Loki reference, but I decided not to because I don't want to spoil it because it just came out today. So, um, But, yeah, I mean, you know, I, don't, I, I can't tell the future of what I'm going to do because I'm unpredictable like that. I could just get lazy and say I just want to put this up. I'm not going to do the work to put in a clip montage. Or I could say I'm really in the mood to do a clip montage. So maybe you'll hear a bunch of Black Widow clips, and I'm just talking. I don't, I don't know. Um, so yeah, if you haven't seen it, or do you want to do? Let's do a non-spoiler, then we'll do spoilers. We'll give that kind of official spoiler warning. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, non-spoilery. What did you think of it? Kind of overall, I guess, general things, thoughts, and then out of five or ten score. Is it, is it considered a spoiler that I'm gonna call it a dark movie? No. Okay, because this was Marvel's darkest movie by far, and I'm all yes. for it. All for I'm all for it. It was. Actually, okay, believe me or not, but I think this is easily one of Marvel's top three best movies that they've ever made. It's it's for sure in the top three. Um, I, I knew that. I knew it, that. Yeah, knew it. it's got to be up there. But it was very good. Scarlett Johansson was good. I like the introduction of the new characters. Um, what do you think of Elena? Elena was pretty solid. Um... I like I like the communist Soviet Union Captain Captain America. 
Yeah, Red, uh, um, Red Guardian. Red Guardian. Um, and then that one... Hey, all right, we're going to have to edit that out, actually. Yeah. We're going to have to edit that out. I don't have to write a note to myself to edit that out. Yeah. Is that right? 5731 around that time. No, it's 50, 50 of the recording. 50. Around oh, okay. 50 of the recording, yeah. We were, we were talking for a bit. Yeah, I'll, well, I'll just come back to this point, and then I'll just kind of, like, you know, go around to find it. Okay. There we go. There so, we go, okay. Okay, so as I was saying, yeah, it was really well done. I like Red Guardian, despite the fact that he's a communist. Um, Black Widow was good. Yelena was good. Um... Overall, interesting story, honestly. But I would give this a solid four out of five. Okay. Your turn. That 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 definitely works. Um, I just had a mini heart attack because one of the call drops. I was so scared that the recording didn't save because if I I didn't know if like I if it just like you know, but it did save. We're all good. I'm not like I the heart attack was for no reason. I'm all good. See, it's good. It's good. 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 Because I was like, if that was for, if that did save, I was gonna lose my mind. Um, but yeah, I think that I thought it was good. I remember when it opened, I was watching it with my brother, and uh, he said, he said to me, he's like, this doesn't feel like a Marvel movie because it was in the in the opening scenes, and he was like, and we'll talk more kind of specifically about, but he's like, this doesn't feel like a Marvel movie to me, and I was like, yeah, yeah, it doesn't. But then again. You know, going to the looking at WandaVision, looking at um, Winter Soldier and Falcon, looking at um, the Loki, they don't feel like normal Marvel. The closest thing to normal Marvel in those shows is probably Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And even that was very different. Right. Yeah. Some, a show, by the way, I think you definitely need to watch. It's definitely up your alley. It's like right. It's your show. Like if there was a show they made for you, it was that one. I think you should watch all the shows, but. That one definitely is one you have to watch. All right. Like if that's that's your show. Like if you like Black Widow, if you like Winter Soldier, which I know you did, and I know you like Black Widow, that's your show. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. The you know the 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 messages and the the messaging and like all that the action the action is phenomenal. Uh, but we're talking about Black Widow. Um, it was a good story, but it felt wrong. Okay. That's my biggest takeaway, though, I think, from the movie. It was – I liked it. I liked the idea. I liked the tone. I liked all of it, but it felt wrong, right? And I'll kind of have to go – I can't – I don't know if I can really elaborate without giving spoilers. But it feels like the story was rushed. It, it feels – what? In what way was the story rushed? It's not spoilers that Black Widow's dead, right? No, obviously not. Okay, good. Okay, so yeah, because she's dead now, right, and we know – you know, and and this movie obviously, there, there there obviously can't be another movie of her after this movie, right? Mm-hmm. You it makes you wonder because this what this feels like because she was was obviously an original Avenger, she's dead now. Unlike a character like an Iron Man or Captain America, this felt like it was a trilogy shoved into a movie because they can't do anything else after that. Mm-hmm. I'll kind of have to go in a bit more in terms of details again when there's spoilers because I need you know. In my mind, the only way I can talk about this is a spoiler, but I think it should have been a Disney Plus show. I think it would have worked so much better if they got that – you got that time of a trilogy to tell the story because there's so much they didn't tell, mm-hmm. right? There's so many blanks. I don't know if you know if you kind of felt this too, but I felt like there were so many, like, I guess, things that they didn't explore, which they could have explored, and yeah. things that were kind of rushed to get to the end because they saw two hours and, like, whatever, 14 minutes or whatever it was – that's the that's where we have to end. You know, we can't do this long thing. And I think, and there, there's actually um, the uh, hateful eight is actually the, is something which I thought of in this, right? Where you look yeah. at the miniseries compared to the movie, and the miniseries is so much better in terms of just the length, the story you get. That was the one, right? I think yeah. that was the one that did yeah. the miniseries movie. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. And I think that's kind of the that's kind of the biggest thing I felt that was wrong with the movie. But overall, I, it was solid, uh, three out of five kind of thing. You know. Okay. Waiting for it. Yeah. And it's spoiler. definitely. Let me put your. Not spoiler. Oh yeah, spoilers. Spoiler warning. Okay. Montage at some point in here. Yeah. Um, the post credits. Perfect segue. Okay. The Hawkeye series. As yes, you said. yes, yes, yes. So can I spoil a little bit, or I guess kind of spoil Falcon and Winter Soldier for you? Yeah, yeah, go for it. It doesn't matter. Like it's not really a spoiler, I guess, but uh, Valeria, Valeria shows up in that show oh she does 
Yeah. That's sick. What, what does she do? She recruits someone else. She recruits John Walker. Okay. It's not really a spoiler because it's like a side thing, but it's like, but it, it, it's because it, I think what it shows, okay? And yeah. have you you've seen have you seen the Shang Chi trailer? No. There was also a What If trailer that came out. Yeah. But. No. Okay, you have to watch the Shang-Chi trailer. But in the Shang-Chi trailer, Abomination exists, okay? Oh. Like, it's a quick thing that they show of him fighting, like, Wong or something. But he exists in the trailer. And so I think what's happening is you're seeing two sides of Marvel. And I don't want to end up – I'm going to end up talking about how Marvel – like, I'm going to end up going on a complete tangent here. So, like, I'm going to try to avoid that, at least right now. But you're, I think they're setting up an Avenger uh, – I guess a, a Thunderbolts team or an anti-Avengers team, I guess, but run by the government. So that, oh. so I have a theory, and I think this could actually be 100% right. I believe there will be an Avengers movie in 2024. They have not announced it yet because they're they're worried about the impacts on like people deciding I'm not going to watch things. But I think there will be an Avengers movie in 2024, and it will deal with this stuff, this, I guess, Thunderbolts team of Avengers, which will be – a bunch of these characters run by the government kind of covertly yeah. to take – to kind of not take down the Avengers but b- to believe they're the more superior Avengers in a sense or the right Avengers, <laughs> right? And I think that's what they're setting up here, and I think it makes a lot of sense the way they're going. And then the other thing, okay – and again, I know we're not talking about Black Widow itself right now, and we will, we will. But um, the other thing is they signed um, Red Guardian and uh, the other one, the mother, to a three – to a, I think it's like a three or five movie, allegedly a three or five movie deal. Okay. Well, they sent David Harbour for more movies. Yeah. That's sick, yo! What the hell? That's awesome. Or, or more appearances, I guess. Quote. We don't know if they're movies. So apparently, so the rumor is, or what <laughs> they want to happen is, they want David Harbour to get a, sh- a Disney Plus show. Essentially, where Red Guardian, you know the stories he was telling in the prison. Yeah. Like with him fighting Captain America and all that stuff. They actually yeah. want to show where he – they actually explore what of the, what of those stories were actually true and kind of let you see those kind of – his backstory in a, set, in a show. Like him actually fighting Captain America in the Soviet Union or something. Exactly. Or if, if it was an exaggeration, what really happened. Like, like you know, they could do something funny where it's like – because, again, Captain America probably was – I guess they, they said in the prison he was technically frozen at that time. So it'd be funny if, like, you know, you fighting like, someone who's pretending to be, ca- like, just dressed up as Captain America for Halloween, just kind of goes on the street, just someone dressed up as Captain America, and he starts, like, shaking them down and, like, trying to, some kid trying to, on Halloween, like, you know, do something like, they, like, they could kind of go in, they could explore his kind of story and how he started. And in my mind, right, and this is, again, I know we're kind of off topic for a Black Widow spoiler thing, but in my mind, he can... You know, you can have it culminate, kind of setting up a Russian-led Avengers team, specifically like, the Winter Guard, which is the Russian Avengers, right? And like, by the Soviet Union or like Russia right now? Russia right now, because if you think about it, right? It, just in terms of the 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 you, like the political, I guess, aspect of this. Like, if you look at it from a political aspect, yeah, if, Russia's a really tough country, so it would well, make sense to have them run it. Well, if the U.S. if they if it if the word got out that the U.S. is secretly creating this Avengers team so that they can control the Avengers, would Russia not like in in reality, if that was like in real life, if that happened, would Russia, yeah, Russia. not say we want our own a team of Avengers? If if you know if the like if they look at the the nuclear kind of weapons thing, if the U.S. has nukes, we want nukes too, right? Yeah, if if like, the U.S. has I don't know an Avengers it, team, we want an Avengers team. Exactly, yeah. So it'd be cool if that's kind of the dynamic they set up of Russia saying, Red Guardian, how about you come back to us here, right? You know, your Red Room kind of days are over. Yeah. You come back to us here in, in, the, in, in the Kremlin, in the government, and we'll, we're going to let you lead a team, okay? You'll be the Avengers. You know, you'll be standing up for Russia in the modern world, right? Right. Like, wouldn't that be such a interesting thing to explore? Because – that would be to actually get another perspective of a bunch of different Avengers from a completely different country that's completely different from the Western world, like the United States and such. But that's the thing. It would be such a different perspective of a movie. And because Avengers movies typically are, you know, all the Avengers movies had so far are very American-centric in terms of, you know, being New York-based, whatever, the usual. But if you – and I don't know if they would do this maybe in a movie instead of a TV show or some, you know, or something like that. 
Uh-huh. I don't know how the best way. Maybe you know, maybe in the Avengers movie, which I I'm almost certain of will come in 2024, despite them saying there's no Avengers movie on the horizon. I, I you know I, what that means, right? That means there's an Avengers movie on the horizon. There yeah. Is there's a movie on the horizon. Well, 2024 makes sense because that's after the they kind of because they announced this whole slew of projects. It all ends right at 20, right at 2024, right? Yeah. Right. And it makes perfect sense. They're culminating to an Avengers movie. Right, like that's always what they've done. They've always culminated to an Avengers movie. Everything leads to an Avengers movie, and this would be the perfect because they're kind of developing two things. I think the second thing they're developing with like Loki and Doctor Strange and stuff will be the, um, will be the I guess the ultimate ultimate end end goal Avengers thing. But I think this will be the first like the I guess the quote unquote Loki of of this next era of Marvel, right? Yeah, because. Marvel assembling a team like uh, just a, of anti-heroes to begin with, or like of of you know Avengers, but I guess bad Avengers. I, I don't know how to say bad. I'm trying to say bad, but I like it's not. They're not really bad, you know. Like they're like they they believe they're the rightful Avengers, right? Yeah. So I think that would be interesting. Now let's talk about Black Widow because we kind of just. So did you feel like they rushed through the Red Room stuff? A little bit. That was one of the things that kind of threw me off. But they kind of did rush, I think, a bit more of an explanation as to what the Red Room was for folk like casual viewers who probably don't know what it was. A little bit more of an explanation and the significance and context of it could have actually help. Like, at least if you're going to skip over the training stuff, just say if you want to know what the training looked like, just watch Red Sparrow, which, you know, I've been comparing to what a Black Widow movie would look like from the beginning of time because we both seen I've you've seen Red Sparrow. I know that you've definitely seen it and I've seen it. And we know that it's basically the Red Room, like in yeah. terms of how it's done. She's, a, you know, she's Black Widow, just you know. But I think, and even like I feel like they kind of had to skip over a lot. Like the, I lo- now what did you think of them bringing back the, um, the, uh, the name, like the credits opening thing, you know, with the credits at the beginning of the movie, the opening oh, like credits thing. The the trafficking of children. Scene. But like with, where they had that, they actually brought the names and stuff back from the beginning, right? Because they normally put it at the end now. Yeah. It's no, the I, first Marvel movie in like ages that they've had it at the beginning, and I thought that was awesome. Yeah, that was. It, that's that's the one part of the movie that actually made it seem like it was really like going to be a messed up movie, or like yeah. really. Well, the beginning was very jarring because to be honest, like even the way they did the title card, I remember because they did a little bit into the movie, um, yeah. like you normally do, obviously, but it was. For me, it was very jarring. It was like that transit. That was like it was like, this does not feel Marvel. You know, this beginning of the movie is not a Marvel movie. It kind of did yeah. end up following those kind of Marvel things later on, but at the beginning, it was not a Marvel movie. Like in terms of the way it felt. But I was all for that too. Like that's the other thing. I was completely it, all for that. It, it felt like it was going to be a non-Marvel like spy movie or something. I don't know. Like I was, I was kind of like, wait, did I, did I turn on the right movie? Like, is this the right one? Yeah. But like, that's not a bad thing, you know. People are always complaining. Marvel does the same things over and over. So can you really complain when they do something different? No. Like, we can't. Now. No. Yeah. So would this? I. So we all. I. I. I don't want to kind of go back into the history of like Marvel and, um, you know, I guess why they couldn't do a Black Widow movie until now. Uh, because we obviously know it has to do with a certain CEO of Marvel who was bad at his was a racist, sexist monster essentially. Um, um, obviously, Ike Perlmutter being that guy, you know, the guy who completely screwed up Marvel for years, um, and how he didn't believe female superheroes could do anything box office wise and all that stuff. Um, but I feel like this was a late movie because, and that's why, right? Like you can't, like things like Budapest. They explored Budapest a little bit in this, right? Yeah. But they didn't give us like the fact that they were able to explore all of Budapest without a Hawkeye cameo is is unbelievable in my mind. I was, I was expecting Hawkeye because I was too, to be honest. Yeah, because Romanov and what's his they name? They kept saying it. They kept saying his name. He, yeah, we heard his voice. We just didn't see him. I was expecting because throughout previous Marvel movies, they always talk about Budapest and Marvel fans are like, "What's going on in Budapest? Tell us." And yeah. they did, but they. Now the other, the only other way I think you can explore at least Budapest is through a is through Hawkeye, right? You can see Hawkeye's perspective, and then you can kind of put two and two together. Because I assume you'll probably see it in Hawkeye's show, his perspective on Budapest. Yeah. Um, but 
that was weird. And the other thing was, of course, the red room. Them not showing us anything of the red room was kind of disappointing because, like, in terms of, like the way Natasha was trained, um, the bringing back the Winter Soldier program was interesting because I don't know if it was just me, but this movie, especially toward the end, felt a lot like Captain America: The Winter Soldier with Black Widow, like as the Captain America. Yeah, yeah, it did for sure. With Taskmaster obviously being Bucky, and you know they even literally fought on a on a crashing hella copter hella like base thing sort of levitating vehicle yeah helicarriers and they were like you know using the systems on the flying thing to target people like if if that did scream winter soldier i don't know what did because there's actually a moment where i think they're fighting and i was like i'm pretty sure i've seen this before oh wait is captain america the winter soldier I just hope that the next years, next few years of the MCU don't revolve around Taskmaster like they did around Bucky, because that yeah. would do. Um, yeah. What do you think so, of Taskmaster as a villain? If uh, you can call Taskmaster a villain. Talk more? Hmm? Talk more? A bit more, more dialogue for her? Yeah. She barely said anything. I didn't understand who she was. She was the daughter of the bad guy. That's, yeah. that's it. But like, it, it took a while to understand. She had no dialogue, and I'm like, who's this? What are you doing? Yeah, that's the thing, and it's like, like okay, you know how initially Marvel had vil- Marvel's villains were kind of very one-dimensional, as they were all evil, right? And there's nothing sympathy-wise about them. You know, you go Ronan the Accuser, for example, is a very good example of this. He was there was no no way to sympathize with his character, right? Right. Because there was no character to sympathize with. He was just someone who was evil for the sake of being evil, so the movie could be exist, right? Yeah. But then you and then you they find it kind of found their sweet spot with Thanos and Hela and even I don't know what you want to call Loki at this point but you know those two specifically were really good at being characters who were doing evil things but you understood their reasoning right like they're doing objectively evil things where they were the bad guys but they had reason but then Marvel also at the same time kind of has gone this other way all the way to the other side of this thing where they're now, when you look at people like Ghost, right, from Ant-Man and the Wasp, and you look at, like, Taskmaster, who, again, I think there's a lot of resemblance to, where they aren't evil at all. They're not bad guys, you know? Yep. They're not doing bad things. You know? Like, they maybe, okay, they did one too bad, but, like, they don't, you don't look at them as bad guys. You look at them as good guys. Right. And I think there's this thing where it's, like, you've kind of gone too far the other way, where these people aren't people you can hate as villains anymore, you know? I don't think you can hate Thanos as a villain either, because he but wanted like, balance. No, know? but you can. I think you can hate what he did, especially in Endgame, right? Yeah, but his main objective and what he ultimately wanted to accomplish. That's, I don't think you can hate on that, you know. But like, it's a gray area more than I guess Taskmaster, yeah. where it was like this character was kind of like literally just done nothing wrong. Like Thanos, you he definitely did something wrong by killing people, right? Like, regardless of the reasons, he killed people, and that was therefore wrong. Right. But then Thanos was the hero of Infinity War, so in that game he was a villain. In Infinity War he was the 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 good guy. So I think they should have probably made it easier to sympathize with him and wanted to create balance in the universe by wiping out the population. Like yeah, the- and I, I I think it's I think it's something that was that was definitely something which I felt was weird. And I think they're probably doing going to do more. I think. And they did say initially the reason they did this was because they felt like the only way it worked. In the, in the in the movie they made, the reason rather than going the usual Taskmaster with the way, the reason they went with this decision was because the only way they felt like it worked was if they had this kind of dynamic. And I think in I think in theory it works, but I think again, if we could sympathize, like if we knew more about the daughter rather than that one scene where she got blown up, I think it would have worked better. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, again, in a TV show, this would be something which would be kind of, I guess, a long run thing, you know? Yeah. So that that's at least where I'm at in terms of that. I don't know if you felt the same way. Uh, no, I, I understand. And now, when it comes to Florence Pugh's L- Yelena, I think she was by far the best part of this movie. She was. She was really good. She had, she like, had a significant role. She did it well. And they they were they're float, The other idea they were floating around was a Black Widow two with her as the star, and oh. I could legitimately get behind that. And her like chasing down Hawkeye, like, according I don't to know the. What, I don't know when how I think it I think it'd be substantially later on in the MCU. Yeah. But her, I could definitely get behind her being in a movie. Maybe you know you explore something like the one thing the other thing they kind of dropped in there, which 
felt, I don't know, and you can tell me what you thought of this, but the way they talked about Black, Natasha's biological mother, it, it felt like they were hinting at something. Like, like the way what? They were like she, was, she was so persistent, and then she had to, then they had to kill her because she was so persistent. The yeah. way they that, that that was said, it felt a lot like it was a wink, wink, like don't forget. They, 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 it feels like it's something they're going to come back to. In the way it was kind of said, like it was, they really made an emphasis, I guess, on her persistence. Uh-huh. And so it makes me wonder, is there something more that we're going to explore at some point there? Most likely. That's how they're saying it, and there's first we're going to be in-depth exploration into that. So that'll be interesting, too, to see what happens there. Um, yeah, and I mean, a lot of it kind of felt, I was looking at my, like, notes from the movie, it was like, a lot, yeah, a lot of that was kind of like the biggest thing for me. Yeah. Was, it was good, though. The action I liked, some of the action felt a little bit weird, the shaky cam stuff and whatever, but... That happens. That happens a lot with action movies. They just, like, the shaky cam, you don't know what's going on. Well, like, I guess it kind of felt almost rushed, in a sense. Yeah, the whole Red Room thing. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, I think that was it in terms of my overall thoughts. You say, you, you think this is a top three or four MC movie? Yeah, somewhere up there. See, for me, I think, in my rankings right now, at least, and we, maybe we'll do ranking thing at some point, Um, it's right around, like, mid-tier MCU with, like, Civil War, Captain Marvel, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Uh Uh-huh. Like, like that kind of, like, mid, I guess, mid-tier MCU. Because I feel like, you know, there's things like Guardians of the Galaxy and Avengers and Spider-Man, which are, in my mind, above it, right? Mm. I know Spider-Man probably is much lower. But, you know, in my mind, and even things like Doctor Strange are kind of above it. But then it's kind of there in that Civil War kind of category for, like, good, but not amazing just because i think it was rushed if it was not rushed maybe that would be a different story not like infinity war level or something yeah endgame's actually sixth for me because endgame was not as good as infinity war infinity war was up being number one infinity war is the best marvel movie 100 percent. um yeah and i think it'll be hard to top in general do you want to do box office stuff now yeah sure um okay i'm gonna open the box office i had the website opened already here it is. Okay, let's do it. And then we can do predictions. I don't know if we'll end up actually recording next week for our predictions. But if we do, we can do predictions. All right. So let's see. So first, number one, ready? For the All weekend right. of uh, July 9th to 11th. That's the weekend we're using for today. Obviously, because we're in the middle of the week now. So <laughs> um, Number one is Black Widow with $80 million domestic. Yeah. And it's actually interesting, kind of on a, si- a little bit of a side note, which I've been doing a lot of si- little side notes. But um, the when Disney released the worldwide numbers, I think it was like one. I, I don't I don't remember what it was actually. Um, but whenever they re- when they released the numbers, they actually added the Disney Plus premium access numbers onto it to make it look bigger because it uh, it was right below Doctor Strange. So I think they kind of like okay, we want this to kind of look like it's above Doctor Strange. So they kind of just threw it in there and they added it in uh so we now know that i think it was 60 million was the um was the uh premium access kind of yeah. stuff from it uh-huh. which is good 60 million is good especially when you're keeping i think they keep 80 percent of that unlike the 50 percent they would keep from the theater gross <laughs> what was is, the what, what's up next on the oh, yes, right that's what i was doing I was like look it's a, like yeah so number two is fast and furious nine um, oh right out. It is out. Oh like, my god, I forgot about that, actually. It's based on that one, too, yeah. No, and it's I... substantially lower with 11. Wow. I completely forgot that movie was out. I did, too. I com- That one I completely spaced on, I'm telling you. Okay. Like, it's are... always been in the back of my mind, but then it just kind of like... Are you, are you going to watch it? Um. Not the furious mm-hmm. movies to be a little rocky. Probably. I'm just thinking, am I going to watch it in theaters? Maybe. Probably. I don't know. I might. You never know. Yeah, I'm gonna think about it because there's definitely things on my list now, especially as movies start coming out more, they're above it, and I I wouldn't be against just kind of watching it at home, but um, so number three is the Boss Baby Family Business. That's the sequel to the Boss oh Baby. My God, yeah, the Boss Baby movie. Mm-hmm. And that oh made eight million. What is happening with the movie industry? Well, it's all that's well, ki- a lot of kids are going to movies right because they they parents want to get rid of them or yeah. not have them talk for a little bit, you know. So it's just gonna say go to the movie. Oh my also, God. 
I mean, you know, when you're making eight million dollars and and you're top three, then it's kind of like you know makes sense. Um, the fourth movie is the Forever Per Seven. Oh yeah, another Per movie as well. Damn. Um, it's like that. Five? Um, hmm? it, it it's like basically a bunch of people in Texas after the purge and they just continue killing people. It's a fourth purge movie. Yeah. Is it the last one? Wait, no, it's a four, no, no, it's a fifth actually. I think it's, I don't know, I'm not too sure. Are they done after this, or are they gonna keep doing it? I don't know, but it's completely different. It's not in a, it's not like in a big city like they used to. It's it's in a, it's like rural Texas now. I never liked the Purge movies, so I never. <laughs> I tried to watch the first Purge one, but other than that, I've not. That kind of like thing is not. That's not my thing in terms of movies. Um, I don't know. Yeah. And then five is a quiet place two part two. That's what you yeah. three million. Yep, here it is. And then number six is Cruella with two million. Cruella. That was a good movie. Did you is it a Disney movie or something? Disney. Disney it, like Maleficent, but just Cruella Deville instead. Is it uh, good? number seven is the Hitman's body Hitman's wife's bodyguard. There's a second one? Yeah. Did you not know about this? Are you kidding me? That is one of the She's top so ones for me in years. I have so much to catch up on. Did you not know that? I have to watch all these movies these coming days. Oh my! I did not. <laughs> is it Tickets like, on a sale today for all the movies. Are you serious? Are I you, s- I feel like we've talked about this movie for sure. I feel like we've definitely talked about this. But it, it, I remember because they delayed this so much since initially. But yeah, Ryan Reynolds, Sam Jackson, like that's like a. Are you serious? It's oh my god! Are you kidding me, Bruh. <laughs> Yo, okay, no. Nah. There's so many movies to catch up on. What the? Josh, your game a little bit. Um, what is on? Okay, what's eight, the next eight, one? Eight is um Peter Rabbit two, the Runaway with again one million. You know you can the one point six versus one point two. You know, yeah. You can, um, then nine is the Conjuring, the Devil Made Me Do It, with less than a million. So we're just gonna say insignificant. And then ten is Zola. Again, with insignificance. It's less than a million, therefore. And then 11 is In the Heights and Spirit Untamed. That Taylor Swift is a movie is there. I think she's I've in that. I've seen motions and commercials for In the Heights. And I, it's and, good. And it's, did you watch it? I did, yeah. It It's not your thing. I don't think it'd be your thing because it's a musical and it's not, like, that's not your Oh, thing. it's good girl. Yeah, that, that, musicals aren't really your thing, but... It, I liked it because I like music. What, what's it even about? It's, I, all I know is that it's a bunch of a bunch of Latinos in New York. Yeah. What? <laughs> it's, that's that's the best summary <laughs> of the movie. Okay. Yes. That's the ten plus one. Awesome. Um. Do you want to do predictions for next week? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. So obviously next week the big thing is that um. What, what's the big thing? The big thing is. What's that movie? It's the Space Jam movie. That's the one yeah, that comes out next. Okay. So, you want to go first? Yeah, I'm just gonna double. I'm just double checking quickly, make sure the movies that come out next week, there's nothing big. Escape Room Two comes out next week as well. Okay. So I don't know if that's something you want to factor into your thing. I can, I can pull up the um the projections for those movies if you want. How much did Escape Room Two make? It hasn't made anything yet. But I can tell you what it's projected. Uh, the first Escape Room movie. Um, it was. I think it was insignificant, but this one could be bigger because of the um, the lack of movies. Yeah, maybe, probably. Let me. I'll. I'll, I'll tell. I'll tell you right now the projection for this movie for the weekend. Um, is, it, is this website not going to give me the stupid weekend? I, I forgot how to use websites now. I have to. Oh my god. <laughs> I have to tell my parents about all these movies. We're gonna watch them all. Yes. Sorry, I'm just trying to take a take a look. I'm trying to. Well, maybe no one projects stupid movies, and so there's no tracking for it right now. Uh, Fast. Uh, apparently, it's gonna be a close thing between Space Jam and Black Widow, though, for number one next week. So that's the, I know that for sure. Um. Yeah. So I can go first. All right, go for it. You got yeah. it. Um. Number one. Um. You know what? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Space Jam. Space Jam? I think Space Jam appeals to a wider audience, and I think Black Widow it will have a falling off of some sort, and I think Space Jam will manage to win because I think people will be hungry for Space Jam. But it, 
you know what I just realized though, which throws a wrench in everything, because in especially because obviously we look at the U.S. numbers, uh, in the U.S. the don't worry, it'll all be gone. Magic of editing. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm gonna go with Space Jam. But the only thing I forgot about, which is um, HBO does a day and date release, right, for free. So yeah. how many people are actually gonna go to the theater to watch it? So would Black Widow's numbers then, because it's a premium access thing, so it's not free, would those numbers be higher? Also, Black Widow probably is the more popular movie, I guess, overall. And movie theaters are reopening, so people are more people are going to go watch the movie. But it's well. more it's more irrelevant, like that our movie theaters are reopening because the U.S. has been open for so long. Yeah. But just that's the only thing is the day that's going to mess me up because normally I'm like I'm you know I I'm I we're both kind of like right on top of this. We know we know like we kind of know where things are going to go. But with this day and date, I don't know how that's going to work. Like, do people just say, why would I go watch? this movie in theaters when I could just watch it at home mm-hmm. right for free yeah so you know I'm gonna stick with my I'm gonna stick with uh, I'm having second thoughts now okay you know what Black Widow I'm going with it Marvel Black Widow Space Jam will be close it, it, it'll it be really close whichever one ends up going on top for sure um, Black Widow is number one Space Jam is number two wait wait wait, wait. okay Black Widow one Space Jam two uh, number three is going to be Fast and Furious 9. Fast and Furious 9, okay. Number four is Escape Room. Okay. Um, number five... Oh, damn, this Bucks game got close. Um, number five, sorry. Number three, four was I? I said Escape Room, right? Okay, so then... Wait, actually, actually, change something. Put Escape Room above... Put Escape Room at three. Or four, four, four. Paper Wait, is it at four? Yeah. Oh, I did say it at four, okay. Because I just looked at the Boss Baby numbers, and I was like, there's no way that Escape Room doesn't make more than that. Um, Yeah, Boss Baby, after that. All right. And that's, we just do top five, right? I yep. think so. All right. Plus, I think most things will stay the same. Okay. Okay, so. Do you want me write yours down, or are you going to write yours down, too? Whatever works best for you, you can pick. Okay, I can write it. Or you can All write right. it. You have them, so you might as well just write it. Just say them while you're right nice. doing it. Number one, I'm going to go with Space Jam 2. I have confidence that it's going to be at the top. Number two, I'm going to go with Black Widow. Yeah, okay. E, I'm actually go with... Yeah, I'm going to go Fast Theory. I'm going to go with Escape Room at number three. Oh, you are? Yeah. So you're going to... So you're thinking Fast and Furious doesn't drop off, I guess. No, it's not. Because it's at 11 right now. So you're saying it drops off you know, let's say, a, in a little bit. I'm going to put Fast and Furious at number four, and then I'm going to say the Boss Baby is going to have a drop-off, and I'm going to put the Forever Purge at number five. Oh. Yeah, bold moves. That's bold. I'm probably going to be wrong, but I'm going to go for it. I mean, actually, if you look at the numbers right, Boss Baby is 8.9 million, Forever Purge is 7.1. Yeah, they're pretty close. So that's, like, the only thing, only reason I would like hesitate is because the forever purge is specific audience boss baby is a family thing and family when you're a family buying tickets typically you know forever purge you'll see one or two people you know very unlikely you can see a whole family of people going to watch it boss baby obviously if you have a whole family of like four people let's say right or more that's that's yeah. just the ticket sales it the multiple price multiplies right that's the only thing i would say in terms of kids movies always typically being higher also the large number of but then again, wait, how how long is the Boss Baby now? Let's see. Boss Baby's in its week. Um, week they're both in week two. Oh. Uh, Boss Baby had a – you might actually be fully right here the next week, though, because Boss Baby actually had a bigger drop-off than Forever Purge did. It had a 44 like, drop-off. Boss Baby – or Forever Purge only had 43. I got news. I just remembered this. Matt Damon has a movie coming out in a couple of days. He does? Yeah. It's called Stillwater. I think I've heard of that. It's going to be one where he's like some oil rig worker in Oklahoma and he goes to like Paris or Marseille or whatever, somewhere in France. I don't know. One of those weird places and like tries to rescue his daughter or something. That's yeah, all still I know. Waters the 30th. Yeah, it's supposed to be coming out soon. There's a lot though. Like if you just look at what's coming up uh, after obviously this week, which you we talked about, then it's you've got Jungle Cruise and Stillwater. You've got on the 30th you don't really have anything on the 23rd 
you got old and you got snake eye oh you got snake eyes that's gonna be probably be decently big yeah and you've got jungle crew stillwater you've got then on the sixth you have suicide squad which they've done an awful job marketing because you know suicide squad is out no sixth what sixth august sixth sorry oh yeah. yeah that movie hasn't even been marketed once like what the hell they released trailers but like damn the bucks just blew it blew the suns out in a close game um anyway sorry I'm multitasking um yeah i mean they've done an awful job and that's been a big issue for them is marketing they have a amazing movie directed by james gunn with margaret oh do you hear margaret what margaret robbie said about harley quinn what she said she's done she said it's done she said she's done for the time being with harley quinn oh wow this, which is interesting because obviously you know that's like a cash cow for dc and for Warner Bros. Because Harley Quinn, of course, makes money. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Even beyond movies, just merchandise alone, right? So losing your live-action Harley Quinn, does that fit, hurt your plans and your money? But yeah. That, that, <laughs> I feel like you, Are you watching the game? No. No. Oh, I, yeah, I, 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 I don't know how to watch it. I'm on my laptop. I don't have a TV. The, yeah, so that, 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 I think that, that's the box office. Yeah. So we got our predictions. We'll be yeah. good from there. So maybe we'll be back next week. The Bucks, the Bucks are winning, and there's like seven seconds left in the game. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It was, oh. it was tied with like two minutes left, and I so I've just had it's, I just got so much more interesting. It's the two-two series. Anything can happen. As soon as it's two-two, like it's getting interesting. It's like zero-zero. Exactly. Yeah. But the Suns have home court, so. Hold on. Let's see the stats from this game. Middleton hit a clutch shot. Who? Middleton had 40. Middleton had 40 points? No way. Stop yeah, it. Yeah, 40 Stop. points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals. Oh my god. Chris Middleton, bro. Giannis had 26, great. 14, and 8. Drew Holiday at 13, Drew 7, 7. Drew Holiday is the only... Is it such a big turnaround for Milwaukee? The, the, the big, the big quote-unquote, big three combined for like... Two. Six, 8 steals between all of them. Devin Booker had 42 points. Are you kidding me? Yeah, he had... He started off slow and then... Chris Paul. Though. And Chris Paul, 10 points. That's horrible. DeAndre Aiden had 6 points, but 17 and rebounds. I think Aiden also had 5 assists. I was looking at his foul numbers. Devin Booker had 5 fouls. Chris Paul had 4. And Crowder had... Mikel four. Bridges, 7 and 5. He's got to do better for scoring. That was a nuts. That was nuts. Oh, my God. What? The Bucks shot 40% compared to the Suns, 51. And they shot worse from the field and 3. And well, the Bucks three throws. They shot worse from everything. Oh, Middleton, though. Chris Middleton and Devin Booker went crazy. Bobby Portis. Was... Wait, Bobby Portis was so good at University of Arkansas. Today he was bad. He won one for six, I think. That's horrible. What are you kidding me? The bench gave him nothing. It was the three guys. Ever since Drew Holiday joined the Bucks, everything changed. They've just been so much better. Also, they got a dead Nets team, so. Yeah. Then again, yeah. But Giannis didn't have another 40 point. Was, Could yeah, have gone and beaten Michael Jordan's record for four straight 40 point games. 26, 14, and 8 is pretty solid. That's a really good game, actually. He was, it, it's a very good game. Also, if Middleton scoring 40, then, you know. Yeah, someone has to score 40, so. Yeah, Middleton and Booker. Yeah. Chris yeah. Paul. Like, people say Kyle Lowry is not as good as Chris Paul. And I mean, I don't think he is, but people always complain about Kyle Lowry not being consistent. Like, look at Chris Paul. Chris Paul is one of the best point guards in the in the history of the NBA. He, he is, but when it comes to scoring consistency, people always say Kyle Lowry is not consistently a good scorer. He just has big outbursts. But everyone's like, oh, my God, Chris Paul's so good when he has an outburst. But then no one says anything when he has eight points. I don't know. It feels very yes, okay. Also, that Chris is, is a pass for his guy. He's more looking to get so his team. So is Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry is the same thing. Chris Paul is better. I agree. But I think they're con- – the fact that the criticism for Kyle Lowry is his not consistent scoring. Like, he'll have outbursts of big games, but then he won't be, like, you know, but then he'll have some games where, like, 10, 15 points. Yeah, it's because, like, Chris Paul's the same thing, and people praise him for that. It's, like, you know, it's a double standard. He's established himself as a scorer, so there's already high expectations for him. Chris Paul, all he's doing is being a leader and getting his teammates involved. But in the Kyle Lowry's never been a big scorer. It's always been DeMar Siakam that's been the big scorer. He's always been the... For the, every every year, the roles change for the players on the Raptors, and there's been a couple of seasons where Lowry had, and DeRozan had to take the leading scoring role and not be as much of a, I guess, floor general. Whereas like a guy like Chris Paul, 
He's got to be that leader and the floor general every single time. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I don't know. I think there's, I think people kind of disrespect the Raptors often in the way they talk about them. Everybody disrespects everyone in the NBA. That's true. Um, but yeah, next week maybe we can do a another trivia thing or something. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Maybe come up with more questions. Um, maybe. Oh, so by the way, something which I'm just trying to think. Should I just? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll talk to you about this in, as soon as I stop the recording. But um, yeah, thank you all for listening. Don't thank forget you. if you're if you're watching this on YouTube to like, subscribe, comment, do all that fun stuff that people always tell you to do. And then if you're well, listening to this on a podcast app, assuming you're still awake, um, because I mean, I, I mean, we're not boring, but you know, um, do the the review thing and then go check out our YouTube channel as well, which is a very fun place to be. I've been releasing videos and I've been doing it a new way because I've, lo- I've I've had to revamp my entire system. But yeah, that that's pretty much it. Yeah. See you all next time. Bye. Bye. Take care.